Good evening, grinding enthusiasts! Welcome to my updated experience and skill points. I guess guide for pretty much any level in Black Desert. Why do I say any level? Pretty simple. From 59 to 61 it's pretty much common knowledge, everyone just gets a Cheng at home and does questing. Prior to that you ask a friend or a guild to get boosted or whatever other method you choose and then past 61 that's where this video comes into play, pretty much any level from 61 to 65, 66 they all shared one thing in common which is if an area is top 3 experience or skill points for one given level it's gonna remain the same for all of them. The only thing that changes throughout the levels is the amount of experience you get not the ranking of the spot themselves. Therefore today's list is gonna be literally a ranking from best to worst for all of the grinding areas and the number itself I want you to remember that it's literally irrelevant, the number itself doesn't matter. That being said, before we get started, I do have one request from you, which is, if at some point you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like or a comment or any kind of feedback in general to spread it to more and more people and to tell my monkey brain that, yes, it was worth it to spend an ungodly amount of time just to put all of this together. Thank you. At this point, you might be wondering, but Duo, didn't you already make two big experience projects in the past, which pretty much already cover everything we need to know? One of them one year ago at level 62, the other one six months later at level 61, which covered all of the gunning spots in the game. Yeah, I did. And with a recent patch, about two weeks ago, all of these areas got buffed for skill points, and only skill points, and this is why this video exists. It's an update to those areas that were changed, and the areas that were not changed, I didn't retest again, and so I'm just gonna refresh your memory with the information I already have. And now one last thing before we jump into the actual spreadsheets, in the description of the video you will find the link to my spreadsheet with all of the information from today and all of the details, the boring stuff that I'm just gonna skip through to attempt to make this as short as possible. All you need to keep in mind for today is that all of the charts I'm gonna show you have the exact same experience and skill point buffs, so you can compare them directly to each other, and the reason why they are not combined is because they have slight differences, such as different levels, different classes, different pets testing them, but overall they are more or less the same. And of course, I tried my best to grind as fast as possible for all of the areas tested to attempt to give you, let's say, the best case scenario, the, the peak experience level for all of the one-shotable areas and for the high-end areas, just the best I could achieve. So yeah, are you still with me? Let's begin with the first project, the one done one year ago at level 62, the original big experience project. It's these two charts and the only thing I want you to pay attention from these to just make this as simple as possible is this column here with skill points. This is the old ranking and this is essentially what all of the areas tested were, let's say, worth before the recent buff that changed to like 15 grinding spots. I only want you to pay attention to these now numbers just overall to get an idea of uh, where areas used to be. Polyforest was known to be pretty much the best with more or less double the skill point rate of anything else and just again keep this in mind as a starting point. From here for experience it's kind of irrelevant, I have a bigger chart with Elvia as well so these numbers are fine but kind of irrelevant for this discussion in particular. Moving on 6 months later, but still roughly 6 months ago, to the second big experience project, this time done at level 61, also on a Guardian Awakening. For this one I will say it's these 3 big charts and the only thing you have to pay attention to is this column with experience in particular. This is what I would consider my most complete project to this date because it has Elvia as well. It was originally tested before Elvia was added and then I added Elvia on top of the existing chart. From here experience should still be perfectly relevant because nothing really changed with the only point I would have to make is uh, again high-end areas these days I'm sure I can grind faster and get even higher experience but this is the result I have for now. 
from here I guess information here if you care about it the only really important one is uh, originally this was tested in terms of trash per hour without any blue loot scroll for any of the normal areas and Elvia being added afterwards has a blue loot scroll for all of the Elvia spots in particular again from here you only care about experience pretty much bloody monastery is the best experience in the game at the moment with my gear and my clearing speed Miramok 12 3 rotation is the second best one followed by Biraki Den being the third best one if you can clear this one pretty fast at like 8000 trash per hour with a blue loot scroll and then you just move downwards from here a bunch of Elvia spots rank pretty high and um, again this applies for pretty much any gear level if you're a seasoned character just look at this chart and take out the areas you're not yet able to grind for example Thornwood you might be able to do this one it's very efficient very good experience Experience and just look through the list. Schultz Guard, again, grindable on a season character. I mean, this is the normal Schultz, not the reworked season version, but still. And just look down the list. Sikaya is good, Star Zend is also pretty good, and so on. This is uh, my conclusion for today in terms of experience. I know I'm going very quickly through it, but it's nothing new. This is data I already had. And from, for the skill points version, it's pretty much the same as the previous chart, it's still outdated, it's just here so you can get a reference of how the areas used to look like before the ones that were buffed. Once again, areas that were not buffed, I didn't retest, so you, you will find those here if you are interested in those spots in particular. I would say feel free to pause the video and examine the charts as much as you want, but I'm pretty sure you are already doing that, so no need for me to point it out. Still, moving on, after those two projects which were, let's say, in the past, again, the first one at level 62, the second one at level 61, we go back to level 62, this time these days we jump forward to present time now i play corsair i tested the next chart on my corsair awakening in particular and i will just point it out now corsair awakening seems to be faster than guardian awakening at one shotable areas so for most of the areas i retested i seem to be a bit faster than i was before Honestly, this is mostly because over time we tend to get faster, maybe because faster pets or add-ons getting reworked or classes getting buffed. Regardless, over time I do tend to grind faster. So this is the updated chart with today's conclusion and for once I would say this is the accurate skill point per hour ranking, again only for the reworked areas. After the change, Polyforest finally got dethroned and I can safely say Sulfur Mines is the best skill point you know, per hour in the game if you can actually grind it pretty fast. All of these areas for me with my gear score are considered one-shotables because I literally one-shot all of the packs. So again, if you have this level of clearing speed, um, I took the monsters per hour numbers with Marnie Stones, so you should look at these honestly to get an accurate representation of my actual clearing speed, not the, pet, not the trash per hour because my pets often didn't have a chance to loot. Regardless, Polyforest, it's still really good. I have two entries for it, you may have already spotted that. One of them is at roughly, let's say, 7000 monsters per hour. And on my previous tests from the previous charts, I was able to clear polys at around 7.1 thousand monsters per hour and in this case i have this poly fast run which on corsair awakening it, it was just so easy to get an insane amount of clearing speed i believe most players will not be able to clear polyforest at eight thousand monsters per hour but still even a very fast polyforest run is still less skill points than sulfur mines so yeah, here's my conclusion. Sulfur Mines is the best, Polyforest and Kadris are arguably, one of them is the second best, and then the third best spot is Fogan's Cave Rotation, in particular the Cave one. I have the outside area tested as well, but that one was much slower because of the way monsters are placed, just the mob density. So these are your top three choices, Sulfur, Polyforest, Kadris, and I guess the fourth one, Fogan's Cave Rotation. Everything else is very relevant that's why I said you should look at this number and compare it to the other charts previously. If you remember, most of them barely touched like 4 or 5 skill points per hour, again with these consistent buffs. 
And then for the experience story, I suppose it's here, you know, the updated new numbers, but you should look at the previous chart, which has Elvia and all of the other areas. This is only, meh, let's say, low-end spots. And that pretty much concludes my uh, topic. Once again, go into the description, look at the Excel spreadsheet, you will find all the details there. It kind of feels a bit bad going so fast through the old projects, which took me like 40 plus hours each to make. I feel a bit sad being like, eh, irrelevant charts, let's just briefly go through them as quickly as possible, but hey. That, that, that's uh, life, I suppose. Everything gets outdated sooner or later. Thank you very much for watching if you made it this far. I appreciate it a lot. Um, I will see you next time with a different project. Leave a comment if you want to share thoughts about if I missed anything or if you have different opinions and stuff like that. Just open conversations. And until next time, stay happy as always. And goodbye.